What does that do? That means that when you sell the equipment, it's likely that you're going to sell it at a gain because you've over depreciated it, making the adjusting basis go lower. Well, if you sell it at a gain, what's the problem with that? We'll just recognize a gain when we sell it. Well, we also have this issue with the tax rates being different for capital gains versus ordinary income. What, and the idea is that we have a progressive tax system, which means the tax rates go up over time with the ordinary income, but we also have another whole progress, progressive set of tax rates for, that are favorable for capital gains, which you would think the sale of equipment would qualify for. However, you got the deduction on ordinary income basis when you depreciated it. In other words, when you depreciate the property under 179 special or makers, you're getting an expense that gives you a benefit aligning to the higher tax rates of the ordinary income. If you then sell it, resulting in a gain, which you only have because you over depreciated the property, then it wouldn't be fair, you would think, to take the gain at the more favorable lower capital gain rates, but rather you'd have to recapture, you'd have to basically recognize the higher ordinary income rates up to the point of depreciation that you calculated. That's one thing that comes in. With the 179 deduction, you'll saw that we also had that issue with regards to if the property was more than 50% owned by the, by the business versus personal kind of situation where if, if that ratio went under 50%, you can have like an, an issue where you'd have to make an adjustment. So these are just some of the, some of the problems that kind of come up when the law gets somewhat complicated with the, with the different tax rates, the progressive tax rates, different sets of progressive tax rates, and then applying accrual concepts and cash concepts, and then tinkering with the accrual concept. Okay. So when you dispose of property for which you claimed a special depreciation allowance, any gain on the disposition is generally recaptured, included in income as ordinary income up to the amount of the special depreciation allowance previously allowed or allowable. Now, obviously, software can greatly help us with this, but we want to be able to understand the concept of it so we, so we know what's going on, so we can check that the software is doing what we would think it would do, and so that we can explain what is happening to clients and so that we can properly plan for what taxations will take place if we sell property. So if I sold like equipment, like a forklift or something, then it's quite likely that I'm going to have a gain because I got this huge upfront depreciation on the property, lowering the basis of the property. That gain then might be capital gains, you would think, but the amount of depreciation that we got is going to basically have to go into ordinary income or be taxed at ordinary income rather than favorable capital gains because uh, we got a benefit from the deductions in the form of depreciation at ordinary income. Okay, so see when do you recapture maker's depreciation in chapter four for more information. Recapture of allowance deduction for qualified uh, go zone property. If in any area after the year you claim the special depreciation allowance for qualified go zone property, including specified go zone extension property, the property ceases to be used in the go zone. You may have to reca recapture as ordinary income the excess benefit you receive from claiming the special depreciation allowance. So this is somewhat of an unusual situation, although, you know, it could come up again. This is another area where you have this complication that happens because of the special kind of go zone rules in place.